Dr. Ali, welcome back. We know that you want to improve the quality of your health because your quality of life is directly associated with that. Our goal for you is to bring you the knowledge and resources that you need to empower yourself, your family, and your community. If you're joining us for the first time, please make sure that you subscribe so you can make informed changes to improve your mind and your body. Today, the topic that we will be discussing is one of the most common autoimmune diseases, Hashimoto's thyroid disease. If it is left untreated, it can lead to many symptoms as well as complications which leads to additional diseases such as cholesterol and can also affect the metabolic activity of the body. So let's start off with looking at this disorder and what are some of the symptoms of this disorder as well as what are the ways to diagnose this condition and how we can reverse this condition. So the causes of Hashimoto's thyroid disease. So we have to understand that there is an epigenetic component to this disease. What that means is that if you have any member of your family that has Hashimoto's thyroid disease, then you are predisposed to having this disease. However, it is not necessary that you will get this disease. A lot will depend on what kind of exposures do you have during your lifetime, because certain exposures can lead to the development of Hashimoto's thyroid disease. One of the very important factors which induces this disease is exposure to toxins, such as mold toxins. In addition to toxins, we also know that viruses such as mononucleosis or EBV also predispose us to having Hashimoto's thyroid disease. A very important connection is that of leaky gut and Hashimoto's thyroid disease. The presence of leaky gut is the first step to developing a lot of different autoimmune diseases. Leaky gut simply means that the intestinal lining of the individual actually is leaking, meaning it has holes in it, which also means that it is not capable of doing the digestion and absorption of nutrients that it is supposed to do. But it also means that a lot of uh, bacteria, fungus, and or toxins are potentially entering the system without being stopped. This leads to the production of antibodies and inflammation and can lead to Hashimoto's thyroid diseases. Another very important connection is that of the hormone cortisol. Cortisol is a hormone of inflammation. And we know that the higher the inflammation, the higher the chance of developing an autoimmune disease such as Hashimoto's thyroiditis. Inflammation itself, whether there is elevation of cortisol or not, is one of the core factors needed for the development of any autoimmune disease, including Hashimoto's thyroid disease. The inflammation can be generated from the bacteria and fungus in the gut, or it can be generated by other infections. It can be generated from toxins. So there are many reasons why inflammation can be generated inside the body. Last but not least, thyroid gland requires a lot of different nutrients for its functioning. Presence of nutritional deficiencies can actually impact the healing of the thyroid gland and can also impact the function of the thyroid gland.
Nutrients such as iodine, selenium, vitamin B, vitamin D are crucially important for the functioning of this gland. An individual who has Hashimoto's thyroid disease can have a lot of different symptoms. Examples of those symptoms include digestive issues such as constipation. Um, they could also have, you know, bloating and gas, issues related to motility or movement of the digestive tract. They could also have hormonal issues leading to abnormal period patterns, too heavy or too light periods. They can also lead to metabolic issues such as issues related to slow metabolic activity and weight gain. It can also lead to mental health issues such as depression, irritability, and confusion. In addition to that, there could be hair and nail changes, such as thinning or missing eyebrows, coarse, dull, dry, and brittle hair that breaks easily, dry, itchy scalp and dandruff, thinning of the hair or balding patches. The nails can be thick, dry, and brittle, with visible ridges. And they may grow slowly and they may peel, crumble, or break easily. In addition to that, one of the most important symptoms of thyroid disease is presence of fatigue. So a lot of these individuals feel tired all the time. So the risk factors for Hashimoto's thyroid disease include being a woman. Women are about seven times more likely to have autoimmune diseases, which includes thyroid disease. Most cases of thyroid disease, particularly Hashimoto's thyroiditis, occur between 40 to 60 years of age. But we also see that in more younger people. We know that there is an epigenetic component. We also know that viruses are implicated in this condition. So if somebody has mononucleosis, then they are at risk of this disease. Similarly, we also know that presence of other autoimmune diseases increases the risk of Hashimoto's thyroid disease. Anyone with one autoimmune disease is at risk of developing another autoimmune disease. And this factor is 30% chance of developing another autoimmune disease. So clearly, any of these factors, when combined, can put an individual at risk of Hashimoto's thyroiditis. So the diagnosis of Hashimoto's thyroiditis cannot be, just, cannot be just done by looking at the TSH and T4, which are often the most common tests done in the conventional setting. It is very important to look at the complete panel, which includes TSH, free T3, free T4, reverse T3, looking at the iodine levels, as well as most importantly, looking at the antibodies that are generated against the thyroid gland. And those antibodies are thyroid peroxidase antibody, thyroglobulin antibody, and thyroid stimulating antibody. And on the basis of that, we can diagnose the presence of Hashimoto's thyroiditis. In addition to Finding if you have thyroid disease or not, it is very important to do functional testing. The purpose of functional testing in individuals who have been diagnosed with Hashimoto's thyroiditis is to address the root cause of the problem. 
to identify the root cause of the problem. For example, functional testing helps us identify if an individual has leaky gut or not. It helps us understand if there are nutritional deficiencies. It helps us find out if there is underlying inflammation. We can also look at the cortisol levels. These are some of the tests which are very important in order for us to understand the root cause of the Hashimoto's thyroiditis. A functional approach to Hashimoto's thyroid disease is an approach which actually reverses the root cause of the problem. It is important to understand what has given rise to this autoimmune disease because development of one autoimmune disease increases the possibility of another autoimmune disease by a factor of 30%. So if there is an underlying leaky gut, it needs to be resolved. If there is an underlying inflammation source, it needs to be identified and taken care of. If there is a toxin exposure, then that toxin exposure has to be eliminated so that the amount of antibodies can be reduced and the function of the gland can be restored. Thank you so much for being with us today.